example. And if you would explain what you do to your mom, how, how would you do that? Sure. Yeah, I think for a long time, my mom explained me as uh, either doing social media or being a blogger, which isn't totally incorrect, but <laughs> it doesn't really capture nuance. Um, and when she talked about me being a blogger, whenever she introduced me to someone that way, they were always like, oh, well, you know, like, what products do you write about? You know, are you an influencer or whatever? And so it's like, okay, I need to kind of take back control of that narrative. So Hi, and welcome to Digital Explain to My Mom. Uh, today, I'm joined by Maddie Osman. Uh, Maddie is the author of Writing for Humans and Robots, The New Rules of Content Style. Uh, so anything that touches robots is usually something, for a geek like me, very interesting. Um, <laughs> Maddie operates the Blocksmith, an SEO content agency for B2B tech companies, and that works with clients like HubSpot, Automatic, Kinsta, and Sprout Social. Uh, she produces a lot of content resources, a lot of resources, she has classes on Skillshare, uh, mm -hmm. she's active within the WordPress community. Uh, so yeah, so it's a real pleasure to have uh, Maddie on the podcast. So Maddie, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to, to break down some of these concepts. Yeah, that's great. I, I think we need it. Uh, <laughs> sometimes we use a jargon that we don't understand ourselves. So I, I tried to introduce you, but how would you introduce yourself? I don't think I would change much. Um, yeah, I mean, we focus, my, my company focuses on B2B tech. We love breaking down sort of like developer speak, complicated language into something that the lay person can understand. I, I would say most of our customers are enterprise businesses, but most of our readers are small businesses. So, you know, we love to, we love to create things that can help anybody just like get up and running on the internet i think that's that's our sweet spot okay that's pretty cool and if you would explain what you do to your mom how, how would you do that sure yeah i think for a long time my mom explained me as uh either doing social media or being a blogger which isn't totally incorrect but <laughs> it doesn't really capture nuance um And when she talked about me being a blogger, whenever she introduced me to someone that way, they were always like, oh, well, you know, like, what products do you write about? You know, are you an influencer or whatever? And so it's like, okay, I need to kind of take back control of that narrative. So I used to freelance, right? And then nowadays, the way that I would explain it to my mom is that I run a marketing company. That's the most accurate way to describe it. And more specifically, The work that my marketing company does for clients are web communications. It's probably thanks for listening to Digital to Explain to My Mom, the podcast that cuts through the marketing wow wow. If you like the podcast, please rate it with five stars on iTunes or the podcasting app you use. So, Remember that yeah, sharing is caring, so feel free to share with your friends and colleagues. If you want to find the show notes on our website, and, um, digital explain to my mom .com. So that also I'm looking forward for your feedback, side, ideas, these, and more. So let's connect on LinkedIn. My name is Sultan Simnadi, or on Twitter, where I go by the name of Sultanology. The, the that music you have heard is from bensound.com. Thanks for listening. See you next time. That would be the simplified way of how I would explain that to my mom. Helping people get found in the realms of the internet. Yes, and making making connections, I guess, even more simply. Yeah. yeah. And and how do you explain SEO? Actually, you just mentioned, but how how do you explain SEO? Sure. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people, I think, in the older generations are unfamiliar with that term. A lot of millennials, kind of my generation, they know it because they interact with it so much. They're digital natives. They're kind of savvy to kind of how, yeah, all technology in general works. But if I were to explain the concept of SEO to my mom, and I think whenever I'm breaking it down for somebody who's just really unfamiliar, I like to explain SEO first by spelling it out, search engine optimization. So it's the process of 
trying to show up in relevant search on a search engine like Google. Um, I think explaining that involves explaining things like the SERPs, the search engine results page, which is what happens after you hit enter when you key in a query and you hit enter and you get those results that you can choose from. And search engine optimization is really the efforts that you take to show up as high as possible in a relevant search that somehow connects back to your ideal customer. And one way that you can determine relevance is through intent. And that's just asking yourself the question, why did somebody type this in? And, you know, does their state of mind kind of match um, my products? You know, do I have content that can guide them based on whatever state of the buyer's journey they're in? You know, are they kind of just looking? Are they ready for a solution? It takes different types of content to sort of meet people at these different stages. So that's another mm -hmm. thing. But then I think the last like major concept that I try to explain to people when I'm explaining SEO for the first time is the idea that it's not just about one thing. There, there are, as I see them, there are three pillars. So there's backlinks, which is getting other websites to link to you because it helps to show authority. It helps to show relevance. That helps Google. It's kind of, I would say, like a shortcut that Google takes when ranking by relying on sort of other people lending their authority. Um, it's also your website's technical structure. So are there any sort of speed, performance issues? Is it secure? Is it mobile friendly? Um, you know, things like that are, are really important. And I think some people sort of push those to the wayside because they prefer spending time on the third pillar, which is sort of on-page SEO or like the content itself. It's how you present that content. You know, are you creating a meta title and a meta description? Are you including internal and external links to, again, sort of demonstrate context? Um, are you making sure that it's readable, it's skimmable, um, free of major spelling and grammar errors? So yeah, whenever I explain SEO, I like to I like to show that it's not just one thing. It's about a lot of interconnected things. And, and ultimately, I think a good way to summarize all those things is kind of like the user or reader experience. So it's, it's how all those things interact so that the reader gets the best experience. Okay. Yeah. So, so you mentioned backlinks. Um, so sometimes it's, so I, I, I've been building websites. I, my first one was in 97. So it makes me kind of an old guy, I think, <laughs> uh, talking about millennials. Um, <laughs> but I know that it was like the, the game has been a lot about those backlinks that would be the magic. Like you, you go on Fiverr and you pay $10. Don't do that. No, uh, <laughs> to <the> backlinks. <laughs> I think that's a, that might be a good point to, to expand on too, for, for those who, you just don't know how to navigate it. So there's also what people call like black hat and white hat SEO. And what that just means is like, there are tactics that are kind of compliant with Google. And then there are tactics that not so much. <laughs> and um, what it comes down to is when somebody promises you in, in anything in SEO, when someone promises you that they're going to get you like amazing results for a very low price, the implication I get is that they're taking a shortcut and it is possible that by buying a package like that, you will shoot up in the rankings, maybe even number one. But what happens is Google figures it out really quick because they know the games that people play to do that. And more likely than not, you're going to get de-indexed, which means completely taken off of the Google index for the future if they see that and if they think that you're doing it on purpose which, um, you know, maybe you enjoy one day at the top of the rankings, but it's it's just not worth the cleanup, the appeal you have to make to Google to get back in their index. Um, and so that's why you shouldn't assume that like any good deal is worth it in SEO. I, I think that the best results, they take time. You can do them mm -hmm. without working with another person, um, but there are no shortcuts. No. Yeah. And so if I would take the, um, the road to fame, so I'm, I'm starting a business, 
who I'm starting a blog and mm -hmm. I, I want to share some content. <coughs> how, sure. much, how much time would it take me to, to get somewhere? Sure. If you're brand new, I think what we tell our clients is expect a couple months for Google to index it for you to, for Google to start to see like the consistency of what you're doing mm -hmm. and respond to that. Um, it depends again on all those different factors yeah. is your website's technical structure sound. Have you started getting backlinks? I think backlinks are one of the most neglective aspects of SEO, but they are one of the most important. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard because it's one of the parts of SEO that you don't have direct control over. So that's why people neglect it. But, um, you know, I think one like pro tip I can give for backlinks is like, maybe start with like your kind of friend and colleague circle. Can you find some like mutually beneficial ways to link to each other potentially? You, I will say you do want to try to avoid what's called reciprocal backlinking, which is like creating kind of a loop between your websites. But if you have a couple different websites and you could kind of, mm -hmm. you know, figure that out. Um, th there are a lot of, I think, low lift ways to get backlinks. You just have to be constantly looking for those opportunities. Yeah. And, and put them on the right side and not out of the blue, like a $5 package would give you. So it's right. A, exactly. Yeah. 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 So rather have one link coming from CNN or any other famous website than sure. from 200 obscure blogs somewhere. Okay. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that's worth kind of expanding on too, which is just like the relevance factor. So it's like, mm -hmm. not all websites are equal for backlinking, even, even the big ones necessarily. So like if CNN's linking to you, then you probably have some sort of like political side or, or some news and timeliness yeah. side. And so that would be a great backlink for you if that's true. But if you have like a mommy blog, I, I guess it just depends. Like, does that new, does the news that CNN reports on typically relate to the same topics that you would write about? If not, then maybe you should look for something more like parent magazine, you know, that would be a great backlink to have. Um, yeah. So again, just saying relevance really is key with the backlinks. I mean, some of the news sites, yeah, you can kind of twist it to like, well, maybe they covered this topic in some way. Okay, fine. But, um, you know, I'm not going to try to get like a backlink from NASA, for example, for my content agency, not that they would link to me anyway, but it's just, it's just not really relevant. And so it's yeah. not going to help me in Google search necessarily. Yeah. So actually for, we could imagine that for each site of online or online presence, they have kind of a context of where they put you in. Right. And this is kind of the area where you're roaming. Okay. I, I never thought about it this way. And um, so in your book, um, Writing for Humans and Robots, um, what are the ways you can... Yeah, because I mean, we are dependent on a robot called Google or Bing or <laughs> right. whatever search engine. Um, so how do you make content appealing for them, especially now that we have much more besides blog and videos and, and everything? So how, how do you make it appealing? Totally. Yeah, I think it's worth saying or it's worth mentioning that you always want to put the human first, right? Because they're the ones that can actually buy from us. They really respond to empathy, you know interacting with the words of a fellow human. I think when it comes to robots, it's about two main things. One we've already mentioned, which is intent and matching intent. So making sure that if there's a keyword you're going after, that you do some research you, on the Google search engine results page and you just see, well, what is Google indexing for this? What is it recommending for this query? And if you're going to write something that looks similar-ish to that, I mean, the idea is that if you're creating new content, you're adding something to the world instead of just, you know, growing this like major expanse of what already exists. Um, but the idea is that you're finding a unique contribution, but that it, but that it fits within what's already there. It's not sort of like totally breaking the mold because again, Google is the one that kind of sets the rules here. We, we have to follow them to some extent if we want to show up in their search. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, understanding intent, creating something for that intent and not, 
I think something that I was tempted to do earlier in my career is like fit a square peg in a round hole when it comes to keywords. And it's like looking at that and being like, "Mm, I'm going to do something else or, you know, oh, I'm going to try to make this work, even though it's not like super relevant to this business. But I really like this keyword because, you know, it has a high search volume and, uh, you know, the difficulty to rank is low or something like that. I, Mm -hmm. I think that like the days of that working, if it worked at all, are totally over. So don't be tempted to do that. Just keep keep researching if you're hitting a wall. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's that. And I think the other thing that robots respond to is descriptiveness. So it's it's identifying keywords, the primary and some also related ones. Um, and I think doing some research on Google search engine results page can help you find more ideas for that. Um, and then weaving that into the content, because because I think Google, the more descriptive you can be, the more context they have about your content. And so so I think that's ultimately what it is right for a robot. It's just like you're explaining for them because they don't have the human knowledge, background, context, whatever. So that's that's what we're trying to give them. We're trying to almost in some ways, like over explain things. Um, but in a way that again doesn't doesn't hurt the human's reader experience. Okay. Yeah. So you you try to over explain to help them put you in the right, I would imagine, buckets where they would segment your content. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, I, think, and, and I, yeah. I was just gonna say Go I think that Google, as of like the BERT update, which I think was in 2019. Google is getting more contextual. They have AI and machine learning that shapes their algorithm and transforms it every day. And so I think that descriptiveness is something that is probably a dated concept, to be honest. But for me, I like to think in terms of backwards compatibility when it comes to optimizing for Google. Um, So I'm I'm going to continue to do stuff like that. I'm going to continue to do things like including my keyword in a meta title and meta description, even though a lot of SEOs say that that's not really necessary anymore. But I I like to cover my bases. And I think where we're at right now with Google, there's still a lot of experimentation in the algorithm. There's still a lot of things being developed. And so even though I trust that they're going towards this place where it's getting more contextual, it doesn't need... It certainly doesn't need keyword stuffing at this point where we're just trying to use a keyword as much as possible to sort of yell at yeah. Google. That's what this content is about. I don't think we need to do that anymore, but um, I'm still going to be descriptive in the things that I write ju- just in case. Just in case, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember it was some people were adding keywords in the in in the document or in the page at the bottom in the same color as the background. Right, uh, right. Yeah, that's we're hoping that that's yeah, that Google reads <laughs> yeah, reads uh, cars twenty five times on your page. So you must be a really important car website. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. No okay. good. Yeah. It was so spammy it's... back then and Google just didn't have a way to detect it, right? But now right. they've seen right. all the tricks. So Yeah. So Let's not try to outsmart them. So, um, if you would have one, one one piece of advice for the listeners today, what what would it be? Sure, like about SEO in general. Yeah, about SEO. I think. Yeah. Mm. I think the best advice that I can give is um, if you're trying to learn it, if you're trying to understand it from a place of you know a beginner level or whatever. Um, I think just try stuff. When I, um, on my like career journey or whatever you want to call it, there was a point of time where I was kind of stuck in a sales role. I really wanted to do marketing and um, I just decided I was going to start a blog and and play around with it and play around with different promotional mechanisms just to see like w- what could I be good at and and where can I go from here. And that's that's when I started learning about SEO and you know, I saw how effective that could be and built a business off of that. And so I think the best thing you could do is just like experiment, just make a blog, make a portfolio website or whatever, and just start playing around. And there are so many great 
educational resources out there. It's not really something that they teach in college. I mean, maybe they do now, but certainly not when I was in school. And, um, you know, just uh, just identify the people who know what they're talking about and learn from them. And, um, you know, it is it is a great field. So I, I highly recommend it for anybody who who likes that sort of more technical side of things. Okay. Yeah, no, that, that's a that, that's a good point. Experimenting and try to find. Yeah, what, what works for you? I think we are really in an experimenting society. So um, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's uh, next for you? Do you have any upcoming exciting things coming up for you? Conferences oh, or something? That's a good question. I just concluded like two months of travel after um, two years of sitting at my house. <laughs> and I have to say now, now that I'm here sitting in my office, once again, I'm really excited to, to take things a little bit slow for the next month or so. So, um, yeah. I do think later this year, um, I'm hoping to do like a Europe trip. Um, I think that would be like the best way to sort of hopefully put this like pandemic a little bit behind us. Um, but in the meantime, now that I've written this book and it's out in the world, um, I'm really actually kind of excited to just kind of kind of coast for a bit <laughs> until I figure out my next big focus. Oh, that's great. Well, if you if you, if you come to Europe, please uh, please let me know. It would be great to Absolutely. to meet you. I'm in the Netherlands, but uh, yeah, awesome. so it would be great to have you here. And I think a lot of people would love to to meet you and discuss with you about your book and Absolutely. other stuff. So, so I really you. want to thank you for I want to thank you for taking the time today, uh, Maddie. And I wish you a great day. Thanks for listening to Digital Explained to My Mom, the podcast that cuts through the marketing wow wow. If you like the podcast, please rate it with five stars on iTunes or the podcasting app you use. Remember that sharing is caring, so feel free to share with your friends and colleagues. You will find the show notes on our website, digitalexplaintomymom.com. I'm looking forward for your feedback, ideas, and more. So let's connect on LinkedIn. My name is Sultan Simnali or on Twitter where I go by the name of Sultanology. The music you have heard is from bensound.com. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Great questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So there we are. So. Boom. <laughs> <laughs>